Hello folks, I'm back in the van. folks long time no see well as you know I was away in Canada for four weeks got back 23rd of or 24th of May I think it was and we're now what Tuesday I think it's the 12th of July and I've done a little cup a couple of little van trips five days in near Dorchester three days in the New Forest um, not really, not really felt like filming anything. wasn't a great deal to see, to be honest. Um, I mean, this is about the places I visit, so didn't really visit anywhere that exciting. And also, uh, Canada was so awesome. Really, this pales into insignificance in comparison. So. Anyway, I've come out on a trip to North Wales. So I've got a couple of weeks before I have to uh, go back for a doctor's appointment. It was about a year and a bit ago I did my first video, I think it was, and I was doing sort of mid and south Wales. This time it's mid and north Wales. So I've had one night in Hereford on the way up and I'm heading up to the edge of Snowdonia the campsite for a couple of nights and then going into the Lynn Peninsula is that what they call it so I've just stopped in a village called Wigmore so this is Wigmore I'm supposed to be able to park in front of the village hall but I think they're having a tea morning coffee morning so there's loads of cars I'm just on the road as you saw and it's about a 10 minute walk to Wigmore Castle. So Wigmore Castle is an English heritage site. It's a free site, which means it's a bit of a ruin. So uh, I'm gonna have a wander around there. Just got across this main road. So I've got to find a, which is the right road. There's two in front of me to get to Wigmore Castle. Oh might be a sign up here so let's go and have a look at Wigmore Castle. Wigmore is in Herefordshire. I was staying just to the east of Hereford and head up through towards Lempster and uh, Wigmore seems to be just a little village on the A or B4177 I think it is. I might be wrong there. So just heading up this little lane. <laughs> I think this is called Castle Lane. So hopefully I'm in the right place. Main road was quite busy. And there's obviously someone getting, cutting trees, so <sighs> always get them. There's some major tree surgery going on in that little B&B. The trouble is now I'm going to be comparing everything with Canada, so bear with me, I might get it out of my system. Lots more greenery here, that's for sure. I can't actually see it yet, uh, but there's a sign. I was a bit at the top there, <sighs> so what does it say about it? So Wigmore Castle was a major centre of aristocratic power and control for sur surrounding area throughout the medieval period. It was sited on a steep narrow ridge, ideal for defence. Yes, I agree with that. The castle was divided into three main parts. The outer bailey, where I'm standing, really. <laughs> I don't think I've gone through any walls. Probably house stables. The inner bailey, defended by a deep double ditch. 
So that's probably in those trees. And uh, this was the main residential of the castle. Above this loomed the heavily defended Shell Keep, which may well be that bit on the top there. So this was founded in 1070 by William Fitz Osborne, it's biting me, Earl of Hereford and William the Conqueror's right hand man. The original Norman castle at Wigmore had reinforced timber walls on top of large earthworks. After Fitz Osborne's death, the castle passed to the Mortimer family who rebuilt it in stone. So I think I've come across the Mortimer family before. But anyway, we're in the Outer Bailey. Most Outer Baileys I've been in. You can tell it's, a, tell it's an Outer Bailey. There's things biting me in this grass. Get off. So... There must have been walls around the edge here. Oh, it's all overgrown. There's the remains of a farm just there. You can see a bit more wall in the trees. At least there's been some cutting back of the nettles here. So we might well be approaching one of the, the ditches. There you go. It's a nice picture of what it looked like in the 11th century, a romantic garden on a Herefordshire hilltop. Haven of native birds, plants and animals. Well, that's still the case now. As with all uh, Norman castles, they were originally built of wood and then the Mortimers built it in stone in the 12th and early 13th centuries. I'm glad I put my boots on for this. Entrance. Gatehouse, wall, turret area. There's probably, I don't know, that arch is probably only four foot tall, so it said there was a lot of uh, mud and rubble that they'd left. So that was probably, I don't know, a couple of meters of rubble under here. Just a small opening to the right, the gatehouse. Through the gatehouse, crikey. So we're into the inner bailey. There's a walk around that way, and there's a walk around this way. Me, I like to go clockwise, so I'm gonna head around this way. So I think this is one of the towers. Someone's left some dog poo there, it's very kind. Uh, so as we were looking at the gatehouse, this is to the left, so yeah, just one of the towers here. Looks like English Heritage have done some conservation on this already. Some nice wooden barriers, a bit of lintel work there. And the same, same this side, stop people falling out. Let's just carry on around the outer bailey. See where it leads us. Just go and have a look over the edge. If you can get up here without slipping, there's a nice bit of countryside. Sheep in the green luscious grass. Yes, quite agree. Crikey, this, if this is the inner bailey, well, I did go through a bit of a wall, so maybe, maybe I'm out of it now. It's a nice walk. I just, I've just come up this path a little way as it was going uphill. I thought it'd be a nice viewpoint, but it's so overgrown, you can't see anything. So I'll just have to Keep on going round, see if I can get into the middle. Nice little den there. 
Someone's made these, not even school holidays yet. So I'm still going round where that junction was. There was a path up to the top of the mound. Hopefully that's not the only one. That was a good 45 degree. Well, let's see what's around this corner. And then I might have to go do some mountain climbing. Didn't see that on the way out. So if I don't get up there, there's a bit of wall. There's a bit more over to the left past that tree. All very strange. So that wasn't where I came up. This is where I came up. And I've been through there. And I've done a circular route which has taken to me to outside here. So you go outside the wall again. All right, let's go up there and explore another route. Okay, back inside the arch. And uh, as I said, I always like to go around anti-clockwise. So let's head around this path, see where this goes. See if we can stay inside the walls. Bit of wall there with a, some bomb damage. I know the steps aren't going to be accessible, but anyway, let's go and have a look. There's our keep we're aiming for. Got me a viewpoint. The entrance gate. And countryside. Talking about ropey. So this is where you're supposed to access the keep. You can't even see any wooden steps. So at the moment it's just a muddy path. Which gets right up there. And that path is more than 45 degrees. 60 degrees. Not going up there. So these were the steps up to that notice board. These are wooden steps. Maybe there are more wooden steps under the, the growth up there. Anyway, as it says, there's no access. Just looking behind me, it's Wigmore Village Church and the hills behind it, lovely. For some reason, come down another path, which I didn't go up before, there's another sign. A glorious ruin, that's what it's called. So, Wigmore has an overgrown appearance that once characterised many ruined sites. So, when conserving the site in the 1990s, English heritage deliber deliberately retained its wildness. The castle had become home to rare and unusual species, including the lesser horseshoe bats and wildflowers such as a ploughman's spikenard. Well, I wouldn't know one if I saw it. Accumulated debris was not removed and the grasses, ferns and flowers growing on the walls were carefully lifted up and replaced as soft capping to protect the walls from rain and more destructive plants. Yeah, I've seen that before where they put a sort of grass on top of the walls to help keep the rain out of the inside the walls. On the platform in front of you stood the Great Hall, one corner of which still survives. <laughs> uh, all right, okay. It's just in front of me. Can you see it? And the mot beyond are the remains of the most important private chambers. And archaeological investigations revealed that as well as the towers along the curtain wall, there were timber frame buildings all along the inside of the inner bailey, none of which survive today.
This is the main crossroads at Wigmore. Quite a pretty little village. Lots of houses looking like that. And a nice pub on the corner. The Oak at Wigmore. This is the main street off that crossroads. Another pub called the Castle Inn. And there's a school down here and a village hall or community centre where you're supposed to be able to park. But no space for me, so the van is down there. So off to Gwern y Bulch. So off to Gwern y Bulch. And I'm now going to head to Gwern y Bulch campsite.